Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about one of my favorite things to do with plants during the winter or during the fall to winter and that is taking some of my plants that I grew outside and bringing them inside and making them house plants. And so I did this with quite a few different plants and I thought I would bring over four of the plants that I thought did the best this winter and uh, show you how they turned out. So I will mention that I did put these over in, these have been in my kitchen. If you'll look close in some of my recipe videos, you can see how I've just put them in a south facing window and they've grown perfectly fine. I've added some hydroponic uh, solution to the water that I've watered them about every third or fourth time that I water them. I normally have to water them about once every seven to 10 days. Some of them have done really, really well and so I have had to water them a little bit more than the others. But let me show you how they've turned out and I will put a side-by-side -side comparison. So here you will see what they looked like before they came inside and then I'll also show you, you can see what they look like now. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is one of my favorite plants and that is water spinach. And I'll try to, so you can see here, the <laughs> length it is. When I brought this inside, this guy was super small and it has gotten a little bit leggy just with um, just not a super amount of light, but it's done really well and it's been really fun to have in the kitchen. I mean, it has grown over three feet in the past three months that I've had it inside. And so you can see it's done really well. And with water spinach, it's actually shot new roots out. So you see some of these real green ones are brand new roots that have, or brand new sprouts that have shot up and they've done really well. So here's a little guy right there. He's doing really well. I've really enjoyed the water spinach. And the great thing about water spinach is it is so tasty. So I will pull off a little leaf here. And if I'm feeling hungry or I feel like I need some greens, I don't wanna go out to the garden, I can always just stop by the kitchen and grab some and it's grown really well. This guy has been something I've had to water a lot because of how tall it's gotten. <laughs> so that is the first, set him down there. Next is my mint. Now I've done a lot of mint. I did a lot of mint this year inside and they've done pretty well. I've had some issues, um, a few issues, but this orange mint has done really well. I mean, just a few little sprouts when I brought it in and you can see now it's shooting out everywhere. And I'm gonna do another video showing how I will actually take this and start another 15 or 20 plants that I'll be able to then transplant excuse me, outside this winter or this spring, summer. So I will be, so the great thing about this really is that I can take plants like this, keep them inside with minimal to no maintenance, really watering every 10 days, and then be able to have my stock ready to go in the summer. So the mint, you can tell, is looking really, really well. It's got long, I mean, it's trying to go everywhere in the kitchen, which is really fun. So this is my orange mint. Next, I have really my pride and joy here. This is my cherry hot pepper. Now I will back it up there so you can see. I've brought this in, I plan on keeping this as a bonsai, so smaller, but you may know this or you may not, cherry hot peppers are my favorite and Dr. Miller's all time favorite hot pepper. So when I had the chance of bringing a pepper inside or a pepper plant inside, I knew this was the one. And actually, this is one that I started last February. So the very start of February, I started all the plants with my father-in-law in Indiana to help him get started for his greenhouse. And we started a few extra cherry hot peppers and just one. So I only brought one plant with me when we moved. We were, we were in Nebraska and then we went back to Indiana for a bit and we came here to Virginia. And so I only brought one pepper plant with me and that was my cherry hot pepper and it produced actually in the summer I just you know it was in a small pot so you don't expect it to do a ton of production at least in that first year and I harvested we had probably like eight or ten cherry hot peppers from it and then I cut it all back and I think the plant was about this tall when I when I brought it inside you can see it's grown a good amount and one of the really fun things is it flowered in December and here in February or late December, and we've got hot peppers 
throughout the plant that are ready to go. And I will just, I know there's one on here that's really ready to come off. Let me find it. Here, we'll take this one off. And so you can see, we have hot peppers that are ready to eat and use in the winter. So that's been really fun. Again, this one I'm gonna to try to keep small. I'm going to take it outside during the summer. I would love to get this root base to thicken up a bit, but I will cut it back before I get it outside and we will hopefully have a big crop of hot peppers out here. And I'm also growing other cherry hot peppers this year in the, on the farm, but this one is near and dear to my heart. And really it's been one of the best things to grow inside. It needs, and you know, the light requirements, not all that great, just in a south facing window. It stayed small, it's produced fruit, and it's been really fun and a great talking point. And then on the, in the base of it, I just put some rocks on there. So it's kind of a mainstay there. So it will be like that for a while or a long time, hopefully. So that is my cherry hot pepper, my, my, my plant that I love probably the most. And then here is what did the best. Now, this is a plant that I had never heard of until last spring and one that really was um, a new plant to me and I wasn't sure how it would do inside. But this is my buzz button plant. So if you can see, here is the pot that it's been in and it's just, it's toppled over. Uh, here, I'll put it, kind of smush it together so you can see. It's done insane. Now, if you don't know anything about buzz buttons, they are a medicinal plant. They're called a toothache plant. Um, they're used in some Chinese medicine, but they're also used as uh, at bars to take shots with. They will numb your mouth and they're really fun to have at the house. And when I first planted this, you'll see it right here, that there it really wasn't big. There was not much to it. There was maybe a couple buzz buttons on it. And I have picked buzz buttons and picked buzz buttons. And right now there is at least 50 buzz buttons on this thing and it just keeps producing. And I have actually, this has been a huge wall. I mean, it takes a lot to grow up. You can see here in the middle, when we were gone for the holidays, we, I thought I had watered it enough, but just that 10 days that we were gone, it actually uh, ran out of water and it kind of had some burn on there and just the leaves withered. So it's been stressed out a ton, but it has still produced a ton. And the great thing about this is, as much as it has produced, I am going to be able to start and clone a ton of buzz buttons and get them out on the farm, which is really fun. And so this is a, a plant that really does well in say hydroponic systems. And so bringing it inside and using water, making sure it's watered down all the time, it has done insanely well. And I would highly recommend if you get some buzz buttons to bring them inside and something you could have year round inside. It's gonna have these great buttons on them. You can harvest them, you can cut it back. You can do a lot with this plant. I've just been blown away with it. <laughs> and I know everybody else has, they come in, they see it. I've got this plant that is just sitting in my windowsill that's blooming a ton, a ton, a ton of flowers. And, uh, and they're fun. You just pop one off here. I'll pop one off and you just show you there what it looks like. You just put that in your mouth, you chew on it a little bit, you swish it around, and it'll actually numb your mouth. It's great if you have a toothache, it's great if you have a sore throat, uh, it's got a lot of medicinal purposes, and it's just a fun party favor, to be honest. But this is the buzz button, and <laughs> probably the most fun I've had keeping something indoors. So that is the plants. I'll bring over my pepper plant as well, my two favorites. But I hope you guys saw, I mean, just the side-by-side -side comparisons, and all I've done, all I've done is just watered them. When I've seen that they've gotten a little bit, you know, they've looked a little bit dry, I'll water them. And because I have rocks on top of everything, so I don't have any exposed soil. That was kind of to help potentially retain some moisture in there, as well as it just looks a lot nicer and it's a little bit less messy. So I do that. But when I kind of notice the leaves look like they might be drying up a little bit, I will add some water in. And that has been all I've done. And they have turned out great. And I'm gonna be doing a video on how I'm going to chop and clone and start new plants with these great plants that I've had and enjoyed all winter. And I plan on keeping them indoors or keeping them at least in the pots that they're at. I might bring them outdoors for part of the summer or just bring them into our kind of uh, entryway uh, uh, room that has a lot of sunlight so they can get some great sunlight there. 
we'll see what I do on that front. But for now, I'm gonna cut them back, get the clones and get those started. But I just wanted to do a quick video and show you guys how awesome they did inside and how much fun I've had growing them, showing them off to people and having uh, produce during the winter. Not a ton, it's not gonna feed your family, but it's going to be really awesome if you have people over for dinner like we do and uh, pull off a pepper, pull off a buzz button, say, hey, try this. It grew this winter inside, uh, which has been a awesome thing to have and uh, be able to show off. So that is today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and share this video with your family and friends if they wanna see how to keep plants indoors during the winter or even bring stuff inside throughout the year. And as always, this video and uh, blog post will be found at plantbasedgabriel.com. I am Plant Based Gabriel. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. And I am signing off and we'll hopefully see you very, very soon.